These are 20 insane details in Apex Legends. Now, some of these are helpful bits of information you may not know, but others are just really cool details that the game added. Let's go. For Seer, when using Seer's heartbeat sensor, the sound of the heartbeat will beat faster the lower the enemy's health and shields are. The slower the heartbeat sound, the more healthy those opponents are. For Mirage, a lot of people will say Mirage's heirloom is pay to lose because decoys don't hold the heirloom. However, this isn't true. Here's how it works. If you decloak or send out a decoy while holding the heirloom first, the clones do hold the heirloom. It's just that if you use his abilities while having a weapon out and then swap to his heirloom after, they're gonna spawn with whatever you were holding at the time of using it. So the decoys will not register a weapon swap or holstering to the heirloom. It will just spawn out with whatever you were holding when you used that ability. For Newcastle, when using Newcastle's ultimate ability, you'll notice that his perspective and his vision changes. And that's because Newcastle has a helmet on on every skin. So when you go to use his ultimate, it changes your perspective so that you're looking through the lenses of his helmet. I think this is such a good detail because it adds an aspect of realism to what the legend is all about. For Horizon, the gravity lift will never cut out if you're riding up it and haven't reached the top yet, no matter the timing of when you get on it. Now, it's important to note that the gravity lift only lasts for 10 seconds, but this is where things get to be sort of a variable, because if you're on it, it will last until you reach the top. It will never cut out while you're halfway up or a third of the way up the gravity lift. This is helpful because if you get on the gravity lift, you'll know you have enough time to reach the top and do whatever's next from there. For Vantage, when using her tactical ability Echo Location, you'll notice that Echo will either have a yellow outline around it or a blue outline. If it's yellow, it means you're on cooldown for your tactical. But when Echo has the blue outline, that means you can get to Echo and it's ready to use. But this is only if you maintain line of sight to Echo. Now you can always reflect to the bottom left hand corner of your screen to see if you're on cooldown. But if Echo's already out, looking for the yellow or blue indicator can be extremely helpful while you're distracted in a fight. For Valkyrie, Valkyrie can see the champion squad with her passive HUD. As you're dropping into the match, if you free look around, you should be able to see all the nearby enemies highlighted in green squares. The champion team will have a CH next to their green square. Now let's talk about some of the weapons. Now all of the weapons have a built-in display configuration to show you how low you're getting in the magazine. Mostly this is shown by the actual number of bullets left remaining, but some weapons show a bar or a percentage that goes down while you're shooting the gun. When you equip a sight on the weapon, it may take away this perspective on the weapon model. However, it will add a new variation to this and display a smaller image of how many bullets are left, either on the weapon's sight or something similar. This can obviously be helpful as you're firing because you won't have to always move your eyes down to the right hand corner of your screen to see where you're at in the magazine. And reflecting on the UI image of where you're at could help you decide if you want or need to reload sooner. One of the most interesting display configurations is on the G7 Scout. This weapon has a built-in compass on the iron sights. Now I'm not sure why it's there or if there's even a big reason why it's there, but it seems to be the only gun that has this. For Pathfinder, you'll notice Pathfinder has a small little blue or yellow circle within his cursor. And this indicates if his grapple can reach whatever you're looking at and if it's ready off of cooldown. If you have the blue circle, then you're good to grapple. If you don't have the blue circle, but you see a yellow circle, then what you're trying to connect to with the grapple is out of reach. However, if there's neither a blue or yellow circle, then you are currently on cooldown for that ability. For Bangalore, I still see a lot of players misunderstand how Bangalore's ultimate, the Rolling Thunder, works. So here's how it goes. The missiles come down and land in a 6x6 row pattern with the maximum distance of 70 meters ahead from the flare. The first row will come down wherever you throw the flare to land, and from there, the first row of missiles will be the first row to explode. From there, it then sets off the rest down the line. If you're being chased by an enemy team, you can throw the airstrike in front of you as you try to beat out the missile's explosions. Hopefully, since they'll be behind you, they will wind up getting hit by the ultimate. For Revenant, with Revenant's passive Stalker, he can essentially infinitely climb, but the key on very high distances 
is he needs to reset the climb by reaching something he can stand or crouch on, and then continue the climb. Revenant can also shift directions flawlessly while climbing, which, depending on the architecture that you're climbing, can make this ability fairly dynamic. I really love the level of detail that they added when they buffed Revenant's passive so that he could climb these really high distances. It makes it so much more dynamic that he can shift around while he's climbing. For Bloodhound. Now, I know some of you guys will know this by now, but I guarantee there's much more of you out there who don't know it yet. Obviously, Bloodhound was changed in Season 16, and they are much more of a tracker now. So, when you see a white raven, you can either walk up to it and press interact, or you can scan it. Now, both of these actions will make the raven fly in the direction of the closest enemy team. It may not be exact, especially if that enemy team is far away, but it will still go in that direction. And then you can wind up interacting with it again as you find it up ahead. If you scan the White Raven, you instantly get your scan back. And you'll also notice when you pop Bloodhound's ultimate, the White Raven will automatically come out and fly in the direction of the nearest enemy team. Now, all of these details were left out of the patch notes, but they are super important to know if you're playing Bloodhound or if you're thinking about picking up Bloodhound in Season 16 and beyond. Now on to some gameplay features that I absolutely love and I know most of you will appreciate too. Some of you may not know all of these though. We all know about the pinging system these days and how dynamic this feature is, but Apex was actually the first shooter game to implement this when the game launched. This feature changed how communication could work amongst players, and this was later added into other popular shooter games like Fortnite and Call of Duty. The kill feed in Apex is also known as the obituaries. And a few seasons back, they added the feature so that you could see which legend you just cracked. If you are firing at an enemy from a good distance and you crack their armor, but you're unsure which legend it was, look to the top right hand corner of the screen and it'll say enemy shield broken on whichever legend it was. This is extremely helpful information to know so that you can better equip yourself to deal with that situation. But on top of that, the legend voice line quips between you and your teammates will state that they cracked an enemy shield. This is extremely helpful for solo queue players because now you get to know what your teammates are actually doing, if they're effective with their gunfire, if they're not effective, etc. Another voice line quip that was added all the way back in Season 3 was a voice line that your legend or a teammate's legend would say if you guys were getting third partied or if a third party was getting involved in your fight. Every legend has their own unique way of stating this, but they all do it. And this, once again, is extremely valuable information, and I found it to be reliable like 95% of the time. And lastly, the ring will blink on your minimap if you are not safely inside the next circle. This will be extremely helpful in late game scenarios where there's gonna be limited real estate and you're not gonna be quite sure what's in and what's not and what's a good spot to play. But if you reflect to the minimap and the ring doesn't blink, then you are safely inside the next circle. Now, all of these details you may take for granted or sometimes not even notice, but this kind of level to detail is what I think is so valuable for so many reasons. And I got to give props where it's due here. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're interested in the ultimate tier list for solo queue legends, well, I covered it all in this video here. Thanks for watching. Peace.